Hi guys, it is another sweltering whew, boiler of a day here in paradise in the end times in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. Made it to Saturday morning. I believe it's June 4, 2016. So Saturday morning is when I bring you my clueless moron roundup rant. Or I go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet's collective IQ is heading directly down the toilet. Good God, I could do this rant every day. I'm just going to dive in. This rant could go on for three hours. I'm going to rant for about 30 minutes until I just run out of room to talk. So, of course, being 2016, uh, any clueless moron roundup rant needs to kick off looking at this, uh, what? I need to think of the proper term to describe the 2016 presidential election. And so how is the mud slinging cranking up even before the conventions? Uh, so we have that, uh, that corporate whore war criminal Hillary Clinton saying correctly that Donald Trump is unfit to be president and Donald responding to Hillary that Hillary needs to go to jail. Now, of course, they're both right. They're both right. That's what they don't understand. They are both unfit to be president and they both need to be in jail. Uh, <laughs> but, so I don't know whether that makes them clueless morons or not. At least Donald Trump understands Hillary Clinton needs to be in jail and Hillary you know, understands that Donald Trump is unfit to be president. But the real clueless moron in the middle of all this this week, of course, in the middle of all this mud slinging is that goddamn little spineless hypocrite, coward, California Governor Jerry Brown. You know, the guy really makes me want to puke endorsing this former lefty, the former lefty progressive governor, uh, Jerry Brown, endorsing Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. You know, and of course, so about 10,000 uh, versions of that story, and, and then a couple of days later, although nowhere mentioned on the mainstream media, I had to go to, uh, who, who was it, Center for Biological Diversity yesterday. So we have Jerry Brown endorsing Hillary Clinton for president, and then a couple of days later, we have the federal government restarting well, the federal government giving the green light to the oil companies to restart offshore fracking in Southern California right along all of these earthquake faults. Anybody who does not understand the dots between <laughs> Jerry Brown endorsing Hillary Clinton for president and the federal government giving the uh, green light to oil companies to restart fracking in the middle of uh, offshore oil uh, wells along a earthquake fault. If you can't draw those, uh, those dots, then I guess you are a clueless moron, uh, and I guess it's your choice. Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, anybody in this country voting for either one of those fucktards. Uh, you deserve everything you get. Uh, but anyway, enough of yakking about all those goddamn morons. There'll be plenty more. So, Kind of the, uh, I already had the full rant, of course, about Harambe the gorilla, so I don't need to crank up that clueless moron rant, which, of course, I had my own 
special edition clueless moron roundup rant about that but this is kind of the Japanese version of somehow that story going along uh, have you heard about this story all sorts of versions of this story uh, about this little adorable little darling over there in Japan and this little brat uh, what he was doing I guess he was throwing I've heard throwing rocks and throwing knives at cars. Uh, and, and so his parents, good for them, uh, you know, to punish this little fucker, they, uh, they just threw him out of the damn car. Now, of course, you know, you're trying to punish some kid for throwing rocks at cars, so what do you do? You put him on the side of a road, probably with a bunch of gravel on it, with cars passing by, and you know, that's never mentioned. So anyway, so the, these parents just kicked this little fucker out of the car, uh, which is the least they should have done. Uh, and then I guess, well, oops, they, they went back for, their mistake was going back to get him. So these clueless morons turn around to go back to get him, and he's gone. And I guess he was gone for five days. I mean, hundreds uh, of searchers, the Japanese military, all of this. They finally found the little brat. I mean, he's fine, unlike Harambe the gorilla. Uh, this little Japanese brat is, is fine. And I guarantee you, although it's never talked about, but I don't understand the, the mainstream media talking about this, they never point out that you, you can be pretty sure this fucking little brat is never going to throw rocks at cars again. A little clueless moron. Anyway, enough of that little, that little brat. I just want to say hats off to his parents for throwing the little fucker out of the car. Let's see... Okay, let's go into the selfie, the the animal selfie news of the week. Good Lord, yeah, you, you can make a whole YouTube channel. Let's go up there to Yellowstone National Park. Gee, where have we heard this story about 10,000 times? Now we have elk charges Yellowstone tourist when tourist invades its bubble, invades an elk bubble for a selfie. Tourists at Yellowstone National Park have been a real pain, pain lately, trampling hot springs, stealing baby bison, generally disregarding the rules that exist for a reason. And one of those reasons is to keep the animals from attacking humans, which is exactly what happened to one clueless moron woman who on Friday ignored the park stipulation that visiting humans maintain a 25-yard distance from wildlife and approached an elk with the apparent intention of taking a selfie with it. Uh, the elk swiftly charged the woman uh, and unclear in this whether it ran her down or not you, you, you know but uh so from elks to baby seals i think i closed this rant last saturday my final story was about these park rangers at these beaches where there's seals imploring these clueless moron tourists not to harass the, the, the baby seals to uh, take, this is, they're no longer called selfies, I can't make this up, it is actually a new word in the end times called sealfies, S-E-A-L-F-I-E-S, sealfies. A sealfie is a selfie with a clueless moron getting a picture with an adorable baby seal. And this is what the mainstream media has to say about the story. Baby seals are being killed because seal 
are being killed by Silphies because humanity is awful. People are bad, Snapchat is awful, and selfies are the worst. Exhibit A, the federal government, as I closed the rant with last week, has had to issue warnings against taking selfies with baby seals because it is causing seal pups to be abandoned and die. Uh, you know, as long as we're in animal news, uh, and, and several versions of this story about this, quote, tiger sanctuary. Was this over in, in Thailand, this, this tiger sanctuary where these goddamn Buddhist monks were running this tiger sanctuary to save the tigers well what was really been going on for years and it's finally come to light is that these Buddhist monks Buddhist monks were running this uh, this tiger parts uh, business this illegal tiger parts business to tap into the the uh, the illegal wildlife trade. Uh, several versions of this story. What the Buddhist monks are up to in the year 2016. <clears throat> Thai authorities charged three Buddhist monks on Thursday after they were caught trying to smuggle tiger skins and charms made from tiger parts out of a temple which monks said was a tiger sanctuary, but critics said was a money-spinning tourist trap. The Buddhist temple has long been popular with tourists who paid about $20 each to get in and pose for selfies with the tigers. Uh, anyway, so among the other things, they found 40 dead baby tiger jars. Dead baby tigers in jars. I anyway, guys, so this is what Buddhists are looking like in, uh, in the year 2016. From tigers to, what's this one, elephants. Tanzania denies, ele denies elephants could disappear from reserve within six years. Tanzania on Wednesday rejected findings by conservationists who said elephants could disappear from a reserve there within six years due to industrial-scale poaching. This is the Silos Game Reserve, Tanzania's largest protected area, uh, where rampant ivory poaching has seen the population reduce by 90% from 110,000 down to 15,000 and at this rate, they're going to be totally gone. Uh, but don't worry. Don't worry. The Secretary of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Tourism, Gaudens Malanzi, dismissed the findings. Quote, The report has not taken into account the success of current efforts to curb poaching. There is no industrial-scale poaching in the cellos right now. That was something in the past. Poaching has risen across sub-Saharan Africa where armed gangs have killed elephants for tusks and rhinos for horns 
that are often shipped to Asia for use in ornaments and folk medicine. As long as we're over there in sub-Saharan Africa, it's, lo it's like every rant uh, has a sub-Saharan uh, Africa angle to it. I could go pretty much any rant of the week. It, as I say, if you, if you want to see a picture of the end times in action, if you want to see what this planet, whole planet is going to look like in 50 years, go to Sub-Saharan Africa. And there's no better place in Sub-Saharan Africa than to get a view of the end times than Madagascar. I, 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 I clicked on this story for this, this I, I guess, completely unironic, unironic, is that a word? Headline, lack of water limits Madagascar's climate smart agriculture. Madagascar's climate smart agriculture. So uh, anyway, uh, th but what made it into this rant, I, I could do a whole rant about this story. This is uh, the very beginning of the story. Most days, Hitasoa ignores breakfast and lunch. She is too busy finding enough money to buy food for dinner. And even that is a challenge in Madagascar's dry south, where the worst drought in 35 years has wiped out the corn crop. Quote, there has been no rain at all. We don't harvest anything. It's worse this year, said the 56-year-old. Like other women in the region, Hayatosa turns wood, meaning she's going out and chopping down trees from her with the machete. Like other women in the region, Hayatosa turns wood into charcoal, hoisting it onto her head to sell at market every day. Quote, I am losing my hair from carrying all this charcoal, she said, drawing laughter from her friends. Quote, there aren't even enough trees left, said the charcoal maker. Okay, but we're going to go from dirt poor third world clueless moron peasants in sub-Saharan Africa to see what that old billionaire Elon Musk is up to this week. I could, uh, get a lord, I was thinking about doing a whole rant about this. I might revisit this rant later. This is from Time Magazine. <coughs> Elon Musk just made these five bold claims about the future. If Elon Musk's vision of the future proves to be correct, we will be zipping around in driverless cars by 2018 and colonizing Mars not long thereafter. Here are a few of Elon Musk's boldest statements. Number one, People will go to Mars by 2025. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. I love this, uh, this conditional here. Quote, if things go according to plan, That's we should be able to launch people probably in 2024 with arrival in 20. 25. Now, this next one uh, is this uh, is is this a clueless moron or not? Video games will become indistinguishable from reality. <clears throat> Musk has heavily considered the possibility that we may very well be living in a simulation, you know, from the movie Matrix. He, uh, his main argument to support that the Matrix might be for real 
is the rapid advancement of the technology that powers video games, which he believes will one day become so realistic they will be impossible to distinguish from real life. Uh, there you go. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Yep, yep, yep. So, welcome to the video game of life. And, of course, completely autonomous cars will arrive in fewer than two years. Quote, we are less than two years away from complete autonomy. Uh-huh. And finally, <clears throat> quote, we are already a cyborg. Close quote. Musk has never shied away from arguing that artificial intelligence could pose a threat to humanity's future. Mm -hmm. When answering a question about how to avoid a doomsday-like scenario from AI taking us out, he offered another bold stance. Humans are already cyborgs. There you go. As Musk pointed to our social media personalities and reliance on computers to perform everyday tasks and to communicate. Quote, You have basically superpowers with your computer. You have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. Yep, yep. I want to thank uh, Alert Tribes member Torstein Vidal from sending me this uh, story from Progress in Human Geography, printing this paper titled Glaciers, Gender, and Science, a Feminist Glaciology Framework for Global Environmental Change Research. The, argue, the article argues that most research in the study of glaciers, quote, stems from information produced by men about men with manly characteristics, close quote, and that the scientific understanding of glaciers has ignored the feminist perspective. There you go. Uh, columnists and peers have called the article gibberish and initially dismissed it as a hoax. Uh, here is one word for it, gobbledygook. And University of California scientist Dr. Dallas Weaver took the criticism a step further and wrote, that this article is proof that, quote, the social sciences and humanities have gone functionally insane, close quote. And of course, you know what I call this article. Okay, several versions of this story. Boy calls cops on dad after he runs red light. Quote, I told the police guy to give my daddy a ticket. It seems to me like daddy needs to uh, dump, take the cue from those parents over there to Japan and dump that little fucker on the side of the road. All right, what's going on in the wacky world of yard sales this week? Woman charged after body found in freezer sold at yard sale. <clears throat> Police in North Carolina are looking for a woman after authorities said her mother's body 
was found in a freezer that she sold in a yard sale. There you go. I guess the woman was last seen, in, the woman's mother was last seen in August. Uh, a neighbor bought the freezer from Lee for $30. It was taped shut and Lee told the neighbor that church members would come by to pick up the items in the freezer. There, there you go. Uh, all right. From yard sales, what's going on on social media this week? No rant on social media would be complete. Watching a hydraulic press crush silly string is so tense. It seems like everything possible has been crushed in a hydraulic press already, but from time to time, something comes along that raises the bar for good crushing. Good crushing. I don't know who wakes up in the morning and thinks, hey, we should use a giant hydraulic press to crush a can of silly string, but I'm glad they're out there. And I guess it's talking about that this crushing things has now become a hydraulic as a YouTube genre, a recent phenomenon which can be traced back to the hydraulic press channel. And since his first videos involving Barbies and golf balls, his channel has become enormously popular and spawned all kinds of copycats. Press Tube, the site that made the video about the uh, silly string, is one of those, but just because it's not the original does not make the video any less enjoyable. So if you want to become a YouTube sensation, start crushing things with hydraulic presses. Okay, what do I got? I guess I got time for two more quick ones. A woman breastfed in a restaurant and what happened next will warm your little heart. When it comes to viral breastfeeding stories, you never know exactly what you're going to get. Here's the latest. Uh, I guess this clueless moron uh, pulling out her tit to feed her little screaming brat. Uh, you know, guys, I, I can't even finish this. Uh, I, 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 I truly am getting ready to vomit. The, this story about this, this heartwarming story is uh, a woman fed, in, breastfed in a restaurant, and what happened next? will turn your little eco-Nazi stomach. But as long as we're talking about tits, what is Kylie Jenner up to? Once again, we're going to wrap up our rant with Kylie Jenner sports under boob bearing jumpsuit on night out with sister Kendall. Kylie Jenner is stepping out with the crew uh, as the Keeping Up with the Kardashian star sported a sexy tan jumpsuit with cutouts at the shoulders, sides, and chest with matching heels. She's topped off the look with dark lipstick and her dark hair tumbling over her shoulders. So we're gonna wrap up 
today's clueless moron roundup rat with a picture of Kylie Jenner's boobs hanging out. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this week's clueless moron roundup rant. I could go on and on, guys, but uh, I got to figure out what to do with the rest of my day. And the little dog says, it's time to get moving, Pop. Enough of your clueless morons. Oh, Jesus. Bye, guys.